Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so delighted and so very, very honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Himalaya, Ghana, Podcast Chaser, Podbean, all the pods. Wherever you find your podcast, you can find the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest today is Jessie Human. She is here to celebrate a really important book, I think. It's called What's Today For? Before we invite Jesse into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Carry Me Home, the really thought-provoking middle grade novel by Janet Fox. Carry Me Home is a book about a family that becomes homeless due to unforeseen circumstances, but it's primarily about community, compassion, and kindness. Uh, Lulu, who is 12 years old, and her sister Serena, they live in a car with their father. When he goes missing, Lulu is forced to take care of herself and Serena with almost no money, clothes that aren't warm enough, and the fear that if somebody finds out about their situation, the girls may be separated forever. This is a situation that way too many kids are finding themselves in today. Carry Me Home is a fantastic book that can inspire conversations with your kids about homelessness, uh, about compassion, but most of all about the idea that we have a responsibility to help everybody in our lives and that when we bring other people up, we make the world a better place. Please consider adding this to your family library. Carry Me Home, the powerful new book from Janet Fox. Joining us right now from the state of Washington, our guest today is here to talk about what's today for. Please welcome to the show, Jesse Human. Hey, Jesse, how are you? Hi, Jed. I'm good. Thank you so much for having you. Having me. How are you today? I'm. I'm. As Jesse and I were talking about, I'm cold. It's 22 degrees here in Boston. It's probably something close to the same out in Washington State. But somehow, we're blessed enough to to be able to be inside a home and to be able to speak to each other and to to celebrate having today. Yes, I feel very grateful for exactly all those things you said. I'm excited to have a meaningful conversation with you. Yeah. So let's start off by just having you tell us what What's Today For is all about. Yeah. So What's Today For is my first children's book. Um, It's been beautifully illustrated by Federico Van Lunter, published by Clavis Publishing. It came out about September um, of 2021, so it's it's still pretty new. But really, this book is about self-acceptance. It's about mindfulness, and it's about gratitude. And I really wanted to write a kid's book that that was about something that is really important to me. And so these topics of self, self-acceptance and mindfulness, I think, are not only important to me, but are important to me for kids, because I think that kids who can learn to grow up believing in their believing in themselves can grow up into adults who do amazing things. Mm-hmm. Why is this so important for you? Because, you know, I think as an adult, I've come to realize that, you know, some of the things that I struggle with on a daily basis came from, you know, really not believing in myself. And so, I, I've I've kind of learned, you know, over the years that, you know, I really have to believe in myself. And, I, you know, I wish that I had kind of had these messages when I grew up. And so it's just so important for me to share that with kids, you know. And what's the day for what it's really about is 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 kind of two messages in one, which is that when we learn to accept ourselves for who we are, this makes life a little bit more manageable. You know, it makes the good days even better and it makes the bad days, you know, a little easier. And then, um, you know, to kind of counter that, the, the second message in the book is that, you know, if we can learn to approach each day with mindfulness and gratitude, then we can learn to approach ourselves, you know, with more gratitude and learn to love ourselves a little bit more. So 
one of the things that I've heard now, I and I present educational magic shows at schools around the country, and I've been doing it for thirty years. And right off the bat, from you know, from the very first show that I did, I I, I used to start all of my shows by saying, you are a very special person. It doesn't matter how tall you are or how short you are or what color your skin is or what language you speak. And and so this message to kids that they're special and that they're valued has been something that's being, that's, that, that has been pushed for decades now since before you were born. But I think there's a lot of things that while teachers and media might be saying, you're special just the way you are. There's a lot of behaviors that go on that give kids the opposite message. And, and kids are very perceptive. What, what kind of things, contradictory things, do you think kids experience that, you know, make them question, well, you know, they say I'm special, but then they do all this kind of stuff. And Yeah, and I think you make a really excellent point. You know, there are a lot of teachers and educators and parents and, you know, a lot of people really spread this message to kids that you are enough, you you know, you're you're perfect just the way you are. But sometimes I feel like when kids are faced up against their peers, you know, maybe in a classroom setting, maybe they're bullied because, you know, someone doesn't like the color of their shirt, you know, or maybe they you know, trip and fall or something. So I think a lot of it comes from peers and I think a lot of it comes from social media. And, you know, I think kids nowadays are being exposed to social media at younger and younger ages. And even if parents and teachers are kind of filtering this, the social content that these, that kids are consuming, sometimes things can kind of still get in, you know, we see somebody that looks different than us and we wonder why we don't look that way. Or we see somebody, you know, on television that lives in a bigger house than we do or, you know, something like that. And we wonder why we don't have these things. And then we kind of start to question, question ourselves, even though we might have adults around us, you know, who are spreading this message that we're enough as we are. So I think it can kind of come from a lot of those places, social media, peers, school, you know, all those types of things. Yeah, yeah. Social media really concerns me, especially when it comes to kids. Uh, you know, I've been learning a lot, the... Um, uh, I think it. I, I forget the name of the doc- documentary, but the social. Um, boy, I'm sorry, my my mind is freezing. But there was a great Netflix documentary that talked about how. Oh yeah, how, the social dilemma. I yes, think. yes, the yeah. social dilemma. Thank you, thank you, thank. I have a dilemma because <laughs> I can't remember things. Um, but the social dilemma really kind of pointed out how social media and the AI works and how it feeds us things that are going to get us to react that it's not feeding us stuff that's going to make us feel good the feeding us stuff that's going to keep us engaged and that's horrifying to me and and i think it's i think something that we need to address as a society oh yeah i I absolutely agree i mean it, it, it affects me and i think it I think it affects everyone more than we're kind of willing to admit, you know, especially young kids who maybe don't understand, understand how it's affecting them. Um, And it's, it's such a, such a becoming such a kind of a big problem. It's like, how do we, how do we address this? You know, how do we help kids, you know, kind of, you know, how do we help kids consume social media while still kind of, keeping them on this track that like, you know, you, you're enough as you are and it's hard, you know, and I think it's why we need teachers and educators and books and, and, and shows that have that message as well, because I think, you know, it's almost impossible to avoid social media at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think it's kind of a balance, you know, how can we find these meaningful messages within the content that's online um, in, in schools and things like that. Yeah. I, I, I like that you chose to use the word consume. How do kids consume social media? Because I think that that's, it's important for us as parents to understand that our kids are consuming social media and that it's feeding a part of their their being the same way when they consume food. You know, that food that's going in is is – causing their bodies either to be healthy or it's having a, a detrimental effect. Same thing with social media and media in general, that our kids are consuming that. It's, it's affecting their brains. And so we have to be aware, and we have to help our kids be aware of that too. Yeah, absolutely. I think, And I think that's just, you know, it's just a mindfulness thing. I think we have to be 
mindful of all things in our life. Just like you said, just like the food that we eat, being mindful of, of what we consume, you know, what, what our kids and what, you know, the kids that we know consume. And, and, and I think, you know, sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of extra mindfulness, you know, you don't have to go overboard maybe, but just kind of having it in the back of your mind all the time. Like not only what am I consuming, but what are the kids around me consuming and just giving that little extra bit of thought. Yeah. So let's let's remind people, what exactly does it mean? We hear the word mindful all the time and mindfulness. What does that word mean for you? Yeah, so for me, mindfulness is just about bringing my awareness back in into the present moment. You know, um, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of a person who kind of tends to be thinking here, thinking there, thinking in the future, thinking about the past. And I often notice that my happiness tends to kind of slip away when I, when I'm thinking forward or thinking in the, in the past. And so for me, mindfulness is about, okay, what, what's happening around me right now? You know, um, what can I do to ground myself? What, what are three colors that I see? Or I have a green mug here, a green plant there, you know, what, what's the texture of my shirt? You know, just, just being, bringing that awareness back into the present moment because, you know, in my view of it, joy kind of happens right now. Um, and it's so easy to kind of get caught up in this idea of, oh, I'll be happy when X, Y, or Z happens, you know? And so, um, yeah, to me, that's kind of what mindfulness means. And, and gratitude, I think, can play a big part of that, you know? Think, thinking of things that we're grateful for is, is also kind of a mindfulness practice that can help bring us back into the present moment so that we're able to experience what's going on around us right now and enjoy it. Yeah. I think the idea of, of, of being mindful ourselves uh, and helping our kids be mindful, it's so very important now for a lot of reasons, if for nothing else, is that we're getting bombarded with kind of confusing messages you know here we are in the pandemic and you know we've heard so many messages um get get the vaccine and you'll be fine oh wait a minute you need another dose of the vaccine you should wear a mask but don't wear a cloth mask and don't wear it and and it's just like it's almost again it's going back to you know what are we being fed by these media companies well we're being fed information that's going to keep us stuck to the screen so that they can profit from us. And I, I think it's real important for us to to just really think about what is going on right now in my life. Yes, this is a pandemic, but am I being safe? Do I really need to panic? How, how What can I do so that I don't panic, so that my kids don't panic? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think that's another thing that mindfulness can do. It can make, it can make the kind of big overwhelming things in life seem less overwhelming and less stressful, you know, because when we're able to kind of take a step back from the bigger picture of our lives and, and look at things, you know, kind of on a smaller level, we're, we're able to say, okay, yeah, maybe things, maybe things aren't great at work. Maybe things aren't, aren't going great at school right now for a kid, but what, what's going great, you know, today, mm -hmm. maybe you had a great lunch that you're, you know, a parent or a grandparent or a guardian packed for you, you know, maybe you had an awesome time with your friends. So I think gratitude can do gratitude and mindfulness can do a really great job of kind of making, you know, stressful times and stressful days more manageable. And also when we learn to accept ourselves, you know, we can take on these kind of bigger stressful situations and say that like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be okay. Like this might be stressful, but, but I can get through this. I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. One of the things you mentioned is helping our kids live gratefully. This is something that's been a, a, important for me uh, for a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those half, you know, the glass half filled guys. And so I've, I, I mean, I think a lot of folks are kind of born with that personality and, uh, I'm positive to the point where it gets annoying for some of the people in my family and my, <laughs> my friends sometimes. But I think it's, uh, to me, it's, it's really helpful. And, and I was really delighted to find out and, and read books, you know, 10, maybe 15 years ago that, that show that science is 
is demonstrating that when we live gratefully, we're happier, we're healthier, we can endure pain and uncomfort for longer periods of time. It's like, this is great. How, how do you practice gratitude to make sure that you're taking the time to be grateful for all the wonderful things in your life? Yeah, well, great question, you know, and I think it's so interesting that you mentioned, you know, that you've always been like a glass half, half full, you know, type of a person, um, because I, I wasn't always that way. That's something that I have to practice, you know, on a daily basis. And so because, you know, like you said, things can get overwhelming, like global pandemic, you know, li- life can be stressful. And so for me, it really is for me, it takes more of an effort, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to re- kind of write a book about this is because you know, for some of us, it, it might take a little bit more work to be grateful. It's it's taking the time to wake up every day and say, okay, you know, I woke up in a warm bed today. It's cold outside. It's cold where you are. It's, you know, it's cold where I am. I, I woke up this morning and I have a warm bed. I have a warm meal. It's learning to look for those little tiny things every single day that make life better. And And the more that we do this, the easier it becomes. And that's something that I really want to be able to, t- to teach kids with this book, you know, or to help kind of, I think a lot of kids in here are kind of inherently are this way already, but I, I just want to help drive home this message that like, you know, be grateful for your friends, you know, be grateful for your memories, be grateful for, be, be grateful for the, the bad days, you know, it's okay. You can handle it, you know, because, because you're enough as you are. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, science shows that gratitude is just so important for our, for our mental health. And I think it just takes a little bit of effort and it might be hard at first, but once we kind of get rolling on it, it just becomes easier and easier. You know, maybe start with writing down three things that we're grateful for every day, or maybe one thing, you know, if three is too many to start with and it's just a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how I've integrated it into my own life. Yeah. One of the things that was really helpful with my kids when they were growing up is not only helping them see the things in their life that they can and should be grateful for, but then taking it a step further and thinking, you know, you mentioned, oh, I woke up in a warm bed today. I had a warm meal. There are people who don't have this. So how can I, how can me being grateful for these things that I have, how can that engage me to go out and, and help folks who don't have those things? How important do you think that is? I think it's extremely important because, you know, it's we have to be able to spark conversations about gratitude and about mindfulness. And when we're able to, you know, like you said, I woke up in a bed this morning. And when we're able to have conversations with kids about, you know, not everyone wakes up with a warm bed this morning. I feel like a lot of kids would, oh, well, why not? You know, mm-hmm. kids are curious. Why not? Why Why is that? It opens up these broader conversations that we can have with kids about, you know, things like why there's homelessness, why why there's hunger in cities. And then that can further spark conversations about, okay, what, what can maybe, what can we do as a family or what can we do, you know, as a class to kind of, help solve this problem. You know, kids, I feel like kids like to help, you Mm -hmm. know, and kids are want to be involved with these types of things. And so I think it's so important to have these broader conversations of, you know, whatever we're grateful for, I think there there's the opposite of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think kids can handle those bigger conversations. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm really glad you brought that up because it's it's one thing to be grateful and to kind of experience the effects of that in our own lives. But there's also a ripple effect that it can have where we want to where we feel inspired to help others who are less fortunate than us. Yeah. 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 We don't want to make our kids feel guilty for what they have. We want them to to be grateful and then want to share this gratitude, this blessing with the people around us. I think that's a pretty empowering lesson for kids. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that's just, that just creates a happier world, you know, kind of like I said at the beginning of this conversation is, you know, kids who, kids who grow up with this mindset of being grateful and kind of believing in themselves grow up with this idea that, Hey, maybe I can help. Maybe I can connect with others to kind of help 
help solve these problems. And um, that's the kind of world that I want to live in. You know, mm-hmm. that's the kind of world that I want, I believe in is one where kids grow up believing that they're enough and kids, kids grow up getting to see how fortunate they are and then wanting to share that and wanting others to experience that as well. Yeah. Hey, you know, obviously you wrote this book because you hoped that when a family experiences at the end of that experience, at the end of reading the book, that they will have been changed in some way. How did writing this book change you? You know, that's so funny because this this whole process has kind of helped me believe in myself, you know. Um, I, I had wanted wanted to write a book, but part of me, I, I think, didn't really believe in myself. And um, I think it's been really important for me in that way. Like, it's one thing to to share a message, message about, you know, gratitude and, and, and self-acceptance and believing in yourself. But then it's another thing to experience it. Like, okay, um, you know, I created this and, and I deserve to be able to share this message that I care about with the world. So it's really helped me just, just believe that, that I'm enough and that my message matters, you know. Mm-hmm. Now that you've come to that realization, uh, do you have more messages to share with the world? Um, I, I think that, you know, this underlying message, you know, of self-acceptance is, is just kind of the, the thing that I'm most passionate about. I'm also, I also really care about sharing the message that kids can grow up being whatever they want, you know, um, which is what kind of what I wrote about in my second book, you know, because I think a lot of times kids grow up. And adults ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, a doctor or a nurse or a firefighter. But I want to kind of help remind kids that they can grow up and be a dreamer. You know, they can grow up to be kind. They can grow up to be, you know, all these other things that I think sometimes as adults, some adults tend to kind of forget about these other things in life, you know, like a career is important, but, you know, so is being funny or kind or, or, um, compassionate to others. So that's kind of a secondary message that I'm also really passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and and I certainly am guilty of it sometimes too, you know, uh, we confuse the, the, the expression, what do you want to be with what we should be saying is, well, what do you want to do? Being we're kind, we're caring, we're grateful, we're loving. And I do a podcast in addition to that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're human things, not human doings, you know, the things that we do are important. Um, but the the way that we do them, I think is, is, is as equally as important. So, yeah. 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 Wonderful. (laughs) Well, Jesse, I know people are going to want to know where to go to find out more about what's today for, and to find out more about you. Yeah. So I think the easiest, easiest way to purchase it is just by typing in what's today for, uh, in Amazon, um, or people can visit my website, which is heartpocketpoems.com. Um, and there's a little bit more information about the book there as well. Um, and really, I, 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 the title of this book, What's Today For?, I hope can spark conversations. And I hope that people can pull that phrase from the book and use it in their own lives. You know, maybe ask the children in their lives, hey, what's today for? You know, and at the end of the day, hey, what was today for? You know, or ask themselves internally every day, what's today going to be for? You know, so that's really my hope that people just pull that title and run with it and use it in their own lives in a positive way. Yeah, maybe in addition to having a to-do list, you can just have right beside that, what's today for? Because today yeah. today isn't meant to just complete that list. There are other things that today is meant for. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, Jed. Yeah. We've had a great time speaking with Jesse Human. Please check out what's today for. Hey, Jesse, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Jed. I've had a great conversation. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Nancy Castaldo. She'll be here to celebrate when the world runs dry, Earth's water in crisis. Another in our Protecting the Planet With Your Kids series of episodes. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love for you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Authors Click here button at the top of the page. You can learn how we can help you celebrate your book. 
tell the world all about it. You can be a guest here on the podcast. Being a guest, it's fun. It's easy. It gives you the chance to have a long-form conversation about your fantastic book. Telling thousands of people all about it. You can also enter your book into our certified great read program. If our panel believes that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a number of really powerful tools that can help families uh, know that your book is worthy of their consideration. You can also take part in our monthly promotion program. What a great program this is. We'll celebrate your books through commercials here on the podcast. Do messages to our 66,000 plus social media followers. And we'll display your book on our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards. Learn all about this and more at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Jesse Human. Please be sure to check out What's Today For? I also want to thank our sponsor, Janet Fox. Please check out her powerful book, Carry Me Home. Really, really important subject, talking with our kids about homelessness and also helping them develop a real sense of compassion and empathy for others. So very, very important. I, I want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Rory Brady, Skyler Strauss. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. 